In this presentation, we are going to draw the phasor diagram of parallel RC circuit. And uh, once we have the phasor diagram, using that phasor diagram, we can have the current triangle, admittance triangle and power triangle. So let us begin our analysis and for that I have taken the parallel RC circuit. And uh, let us say that the phasor of the current through the resistor is IR phasor and the phasor of the current through the capacitor is IC phasor and the net phasor current is I phasor and the net phasor voltage is V phasor. Now when you apply KCL at this node you will have I phasor equal to IR phasor plus IC phasor and uh, we know that resistor R and capacitor C together will offer the impedance Z and uh, when you divide the voltage phasor by the impedance you will have I phasor. So we can write I phasor equal to V phasor divided by the impedance and I R phasor it will be equal to V phasor divided by the resistance and I C phasor it will be equal to V phasor divided by negative of J X C. So we have plus V phasor divided by negative of J X C. Now we will take out V phasor common from these two terms and then cancel it out with this V phasor. We will have 1 upon Z equal to 1 upon R and we can write 1 upon negative of J X C as plus J 1 upon X C and uh, we know that 1 upon Z is our admittance, 1 upon R is our conductance and 1 upon Xc is our susceptance and in this case we will have capacitive susceptance. Now we can plot the phasor diagram and uh, for that we will have V phasor as the reference phasor and I am taking V phasor as the reference phasor because it is same across resistor and capacitor. And if we talk about IR phasor then it is the current through the resistor and uh, we know voltage and current remains in the same phase when we have the element as resistor. So we have IR phasor like this and it is having the magnitude less than V phasor because IR phasor is equal to V phasor divided by resistance R. Now moving on to IC phasor it is the current through the capacitor and therefore it will lead the voltage phasor by 90 degrees. So this vector here is our IC phasor and I phasor it is equal to the vector sum of IR phasor and IC phasor. So this vector will be I phasor and uh, the angle between the net current phasor and the net voltage phasor is the power factor angle theta. So this is our phasor diagram and this triangle will be our current triangle, admittance triangle and power triangle in which when we have current triangle this side is for current I, this side is for current IC and this side is for current IR and therefore we can say that current I which is representing the hypotenuse of the triangle is equal to under root IR square I R square plus IC square and the power factor angle theta it is equal to 10 inverse IC over IR and the power factor cos theta it is equal to IR over current I and in this case the power factor will be leading and why it is leading? It is leading because we have capacitor. Now moving on to the admittance triangle this side is the admittance Y, this side is the susceptance and this side is the conductance and from the triangle we can say that the admittance Y it is equal to under root square of conductance plus square of susceptance 
and the power factor angle theta it is equal to 10 inverse susceptance over conductance and the power factor cos theta it is equal to conductance over admittance and it will be leading now let's move on to the power triangle this side is the apparent power this side is the reactive power because of capacitor this side is the real power and the apparent power is equal to under root square of real power plus square of reactive power and the angle theta it is equal to 10 inverse qc over p and the power factor cos theta it is equal to real power over apparent power and it will be leading so this is all for this lecture i will end it here see you in the next one